So for the past three years, I've been a part of a community archaeology project in eastern Maryland uh, on the eastern shore. Uh, and it's a project that works with an interdisciplinary team with the goal of learning more about uh, the dynamic history of a free African-American community that started to form on the outskirts of the town uh, right at the turn of the 19th century. So over 60 years before emancipation in the state of Maryland. Um, as a community archaeology project, we've had varying success in achieving high visitation rates to our site. The first two years, uh, we had much higher rates of visitors uh, than we did last year. Uh, and part of that is because last year was mostly an STP survey, so it's not really what the community had come to expect as archaeology as they had seen it before. So when they came by, they saw people with shovels digging holes. They didn't see people bent over giant square pits, so they didn't really recognize it. Uh, but the other reason is related to the community's calendar. Uh, so Eastern Maryland celebrates Juneteenth <coughs> every year. It's an annual commemoration of the end of slavery. Uh, and we use this opportunity as a way to attract some of the visitors to whatever site we're going to be excavating later that year. And we usually do excavate a few shovel test pits on Juneteenth just to get a few artifacts in people's hands and to explain how <coughs> soil stratigraphy works and how we can date things uh, by uh, looking at soil layers. Another important event in Easton is called the Plain Air Festival, and this attracts uh, dozens of artists and hundreds of people to the small town uh, to produce and view art. Uh, so since we began, artists have been coming to our site, uh, painting us at work, uh, taking photographs, action shots, still lifes, um, and always during the week of the Plain Air Festival, we have a bump in visitation. Uh, so our second year of excavation was our most successful term in terms of visitation. Uh, we were able to align a site open house with the final and biggest day of the Plain Air Festival. Um, and so in addition to coordinating the date, we also uh, sent out invitations to people locally, contacted the local paper to make announcements, and then through our community network spread the word through word of mouth. Um, inviting the churches, and so on. Um, so we provided some water and lemonade. A number of neighbors brought snacks for people to share. And by the end of this one day, we had almost 300 visitors come to the site. And by the end of our three-week uh, field season, we had almost 700 visitors, uh, which for a small town on the eastern shore, uh, we were really blown away by that support. Um, so moving forward, uh, we're planning to coordinate our excavations with this wonderful arts festival. Uh, it allows us to reach a broader audience of regional tourists, as well as attract many of the locals who aren't really quite sure about the archaeologists in the neighborhood. They don't really understand it. Uh, but by having a big social event, uh, it's less threatening to come and talk to the archaeologists because there's other people there and you have some anonymity in a bigger crowd. Uh, so based on our experience, uh, my suggestion for attracting more visitors is to cheat to uh, pull people off of other big events. Why spend hours trying to drum up interest in your project uh, using social media campaigns, which we also do, uh, when you can siphon people off of an already existing event. Uh, using this strategy, we have been able to reach a much broader audience since most, most of our other marketing targets, people who already know what archaeology is and what it's about. Um, and so this strategy has actually brought in a much wider range of people to our site than you normally get at public archaeology sites. Um, and some of the people have been inspired and have come back, you know, year after year, uh, even though when they first encountered us, they had no idea what archaeology was. So, thank you.